Some welcome news for commuters. GO trains are back up and running along the Milton Line and into Hamilton Station today. Riders spent Thursday and Friday scrambling for another way to get to work due to a work stoppage involving CN and CP employees. Well, Ari Ravinovich is off today, but we're joined by Phil Martino in the Business Center. Happy Monday, Phil. Happy Monday. You're stuck with me today, Melissa. <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. <laughs> and Phil, freight service is also restarting after the government ordered everyone back to work. They're back on track. So a four-day work stoppage at Canada's two largest railways has come to an end. And this is after the Canada Industrial Relations Board of Canada uh, Relations Board, rather, ordered Canadian National Railway and Canadian Pacific Kansas City to resume operations and 9,300 workers to return to work ahead of binding arbitration. Now, it was smooth sailing for commuters on CPKC-owned lines in Toronto, Montreal and Vancouver today, but both railways have said a full recovery for freight traffic will take weeks. Agriculture, forestry and manufacturing were among the hardest hit sectors. The financial impact of the stoppage remains unclear, but credit rating agency Moody's warns it could cost the Canadian economy $341 million per day. Wow. Okay, now another potential labor stoppage is brewing at Canada's largest airline. This is a strike travelers do not want to see myself included, the federal conciliation process between the country's largest carrier, Air Canada, and the union representing its pilots has ended. This will be followed by a 21-day cooling off, after which the 5,400 pilots will be in a legal strike position starting September 17th. The pilots voted 98% in favor of giving their union, the Airline Pilots Association, a strike mandate. Now, what would an Air Canada pilot strike look like? Picture this. It would ground 1,000 flights a day. Wow. A lot of flights. Hopefully, hopefully uh, travelers will be spared from that. We don't want stoppage. that. Yeah, yeah, not at all. Now, speaking of air travel, a major data breach has been exposed. Right. I mean, I don't use this service, but a lot of people I know do use it. Uh, park and Fly. So off-airport parking operator Park and Fly says a third party accessed the Park and Fly network through unauthorized remote VPN access between July 11th and July 13th. Park and Fly says immediately upon discovering this event, its information technology team launched an investigation. It adds, quote, we can confirm with certainty that no customer credit cards or passwords are stored on our servers and no payment information was compromised. All platforms were fully restored within five days. About one million customer files were accessed. The personal information that may have been obtained may have included names and basic contact information such as email addresses and mailing addresses and aeroplane plan and CAA members. The customers and stakeholders whose information may have been impacted have been contacted directly through email. Okay well thank you Phil. That's Phil Martino in the Business Center. Thanks Melissa.